end of 2020. So if you uh, guys, educators, you want to submit, so feel free to submit uh, for your uh, material. We will start again to uh, select and curate the educators to be a speaker start from January 2021. So enjoy. Thank you so much for Jay, Melissa, and Ting for uh, this uh, golden time. We hope that we can inspire each other and also connect each other. Thank you. Okay, so thank you, Antonius, for the warm welcome. So now we will be uh, proceeding with the sharing session. So we have three distinguished speaker line up today in order to share their experiences uh, with invention education. So each of our speaker will share their thought about invention education for about 15 minutes. And after all the three speakers done sharing, uh, we will continue discussing the questions but that asked by the speaker, uh, asked by the, by the participants, and the speaker will try to uh, answer it. Uh, so, during the speaker's presentation, you can drop your questions to a certain speaker or maybe to all speaker by typing the question in the chat room. Okay. So, without further ado, let me introduce the first speaker. We have here Melissa Bud from the United Kingdom. She is the founder of Discovery STEM Education, co-founder of Invent Future Global. UK Chair of World Educational Robotics and Consequential Robotics Ambassador. So, fellow educators, please welcome Elizabeth from the United Kingdom. Hi, everybody. Um, thank you for thank you very much to Cryer ID for inviting me to be involved in this very valuable event, international event. So um, I'm from Discovery STEM Education, which is an educational organisation based in the United Kingdom. And our actual headquarters are based in a museum called Kellam Island Museum, which is in Sheffield. And this is an industrial museum that celebrates the history of innovation that we have in our city here in Sheffield. We are the heart of the UK, the heart of the steel industry, and we have a strong background in innovation. Um, so our headquarters are based here um, and we're now focusing on looking at the history of innovation, but then now supporting young people and educators to work on the future of our innovation. So we work, uh, we work very closely with Sheffield University, which is very well known for being one of the best universities in engineering and robotics in the United Kingdom. We also work alongside the UK's uh, government's Department for Education to look at how we can support educators in schools to ensure that the skills gap between leaving school and the skills that are needed in industry, in the STEM industries in the United Kingdom, are, are bridged. Um, so supporting schools to help young people to have the skills that they then need for the careers and the future jobs uh, that we expect to have here. Um, in our in our country. Um, so we we have a lot of um, educators who ask us, so STEM just means the subjects science, technology, engineering and mathematics, right? And and they ask us what our actual opinion of, of the word STEM, the acronym, what does it actually mean? And our belief is that it's not just those subjects. But we believe that it's actually using, it's when children use their science, technology, engineering and mathematics knowledge to solve real world problems. So it's all about them solving real world problems. And so in order to be able to do that, we, we work on two main programs. So we feel that in order for children to be able to really do this, to, to do STEM and the important aspects of STEM, solving real world problems and preparing themselves for the real world and the jobs of the future, we feel that robotics is a really important aspect of that. So we work on a, a world educational robotics program um, where children are given problems that they then have to solve creatively. So they do have to do an element of inventing. So they are given real world set problems 
and then they need to use their engineering skills and their coding skills to solve those problems. So they need to invent solutions, they need to engineer and invent coding and engineering solutions to, to be able to solve those problems. And they're given the problems. The other area um, that we feel is really important in STEM is that pure invention where not given a problem, they have to think of a problem themselves. They have to come up with their own problem and then they have to invent something that solves that problem. So robotics where they're given and they have to invent and then our invention programs are all about children having that freedom to develop and look at their own problems that they can find and then developing a solution and being guided through that process. So we develop curriculums and we, we have a centre where, where we run programmes ourselves in our centres, we have a few different bases and then we also run our programmes in schools as well and then we develop curriculums and we train teachers to be able to use those programs as well. So um, this is just a, a little video to give you an idea of our World Educational Robotics event that we've uh, done in the last couple of years where if you look closely you can see that the children are they all have a very different robots because they've all invented very different solutions and if you were to look at their computer you would see that they've all invented very different ways to to solve these problems so this is at um, sheffield university this is an event that we had at sheffield university with children from china mexico and the united kingdom And most of the staff working here are um, real engineering PhD students or robotics PhD students. educational robotics work that we do, uh, we use the Abilix platform, which is an engineering and coding platform, um, which we use for our World Educational Robotics programme. And when we started to do um, invention education, um, we, we, the same, we, we kind of, we looked around at all the different kinds of materials and equipment that we could use, and we started quite at the beginning, uh, asking children to always use upcycling, re recycled materials, so things like cardboard. Um, we've also used things like Lego and Connects. We've used all different kinds of equipment. Um, but then we realised that in our robotics programme, children were quite often um, very keen to take, take their robots apart and, and do other things with their robot parts that they weren't really supposed to do. Um, and, and we realised that actually what a lot of these children want to do is they want to invent um, their own things, completely their own things, um, and they wanted to take apart their robotics kit and, and just come up with their own inventions. So we've ended up finding that whenever the children have the option to go and choose equipment in our centre, they tend to go and choose their robotics equipment and break it down. Um, and so we've ended up using the same equipment for, for both of our programmes. This is a picture of some young boys who did, developed um, invented um, a kitchen where your parents have all of their devices together. They've got a microwave on there, they've got a cucumber chopper and they've got a blender as well. So their parents can, they don't have to walk to different parts of the kitchen. They've got all of this sort of, um, it's like supposed to be one device all together where they can do everything they need to do in their kitchen. Um, this is um, a boy who has invented something um, using, again, the same Ablix platform. He's invented something, it's a beach helper, it's to help you out on the beach somehow. 
Um, this is an example of some young people who have engineered and invented something that uses the basics of a motorbike and um, I think they, they've got some device there where they were trying to test, uh, do testing on the bike and making sure that the wheels work properly. Um, we've got a, a swing here which has a motor on the right hand side so these are working parts, these are working inventions that actually move. Um, this girl here is using a, um, a colour sensor, um, so she's, she's invented something which she wants to switch on when a sensor detects particular colours. Um, so she's just working on her colour sensor there um, for her invention. Um, here's some wonderful structural engineering. Um, and this, is, this is some of our invention classes which then had to go online. Um, Due to, due to the COVID-19 restrictions, um, but still they were practical and still we were able to use the equipment that we had. Um, this is a wonderful, wonderful structural engineered um, invention for parking cars. And there's just so many different inventions that we've been able to support young people and educators to be able to support their schools to do using this platform because it's so versatile. Um, but one thing that we've always specialist, specialised in, even before we started to do robotics and invention, we have got a strong background in our organisation in biochemistry and science. So we have a lot of qualified science teachers, people with PhDs in biochemistry and in other sciences. Um, and children are always really keen to do some real kind of research, real scientific research, um, using test tubes and doing real science and chemical experiments. So what we realised um, was that actually the kits that we're using, the, the kits that we had been using for robotics and children were starting to invent stuff with, have got some really, really super powerful sensors on them so that the robots could follow black lines really powerful grayscale sensors that detect changes in colour. And one thing that we'd always really wanted to invest in but couldn't afford was something called a spectrophotometer. And any of you who have a background in science and chemistry um, or research will, uh, science research will know that this is a really valuable piece of equipment because you can do all sorts of experiments with all different kinds of solutions and whenever you have a chemical reaction you can generate um, a standard curve, you can then test other own unknown samples and read off of a standard curve to find out um, the amount of a particular chemical in, in, a, in a sample. But we, we really could never afford one of these and if we did have them to be able to do our classes sufficiently we would need more than one anyway so it would be a really big expense for the just for those, the chem, few chemistry experiments that we do do like that um, so we, we wondered would it be possible um, to get the children to invent some spectrophotometers for us and so we gave them um, an experiment to do where they had to do some chemical reactions and get some colour changes. They were looking for protein using um, a chemical reagent called Biorret and we gave them test tubes and we, we gave them the parts, we put all the parts of the kit out and asked them, uh, we talked the, taught them about spectrophotometers and then asked them if they could invent their own spectrophotometers so that we could do this kind of experiment all the time. And each child was able to in innovate um, their own spectrophotometer. This is just a few examples here, and you can see that they've all done something very different. The key thing is just that they need the test tube to be held stable, and they need the sensor to be touching the surface of the test tube so that they can get a recording and they've all in, innovated some very different kinds of spectrophotometers but then they've been able to do some really high level science experiments they've been able to do university level kinds of experiments where they've gen learned how to do this thing called a standard curve and then they've been able to test lots of samples and look at the difference in the color so they're looking on their uh, interface they're having a look on there and they're getting results numbers that change according to the color of the sample that's in the test tube so as the color increases then the numbers increase on the on the recordings on their interfaces as well so this is an example of the kind of work that one of our students did and um, they were able to get test tubes and um, 
uh, here they had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven test tubes, and they put different amounts by weighing different known amounts of protein into those test tubes. Um, they then added the chemical reagent and the darker the chemical reagent represents the more um, protein that is in that particular sample. And then they were able to put each of those test tubes into the spectrophotometer and get a recording. And so they have then plotted a calibration curve. So they've plotted for the amount of protein that they've added. They've then been able to plot the optical density reading, the recording that they get, got on their spectrophotometer that they'd engineered themselves. And then from that, they were then able to get any unknown sample. So they took samples from patients that had um, kidney disease. Um, so the more um, um, kidney disease progresses in a patient, then the more protein they have in their urine. So these young people had lots of samples and they were able to just put the sample with the Biret reagent, so they got a colour in their test tube, put it into their spectrophotometer and get an optical density reading. And that reading doesn't tell them how much protein is in there, but what they were able to do then is according to what their recording was, what their reading was, they were able to read across onto the calibration curve and down to find out exactly how much protein was in each of those patient samples. And this is really high level research stuff. Um, so we've developed a curriculum where the children are doing this kind of thing over a number of weeks and then taking it further. So they're innovating as they go along and then they're trying to solve a problem and working on real research problems where at the end of it, whatever their results are, it might lead to them then wanting to invent a medical device um, to help um, in a particular medical problem. So their invention process is going from engineering to then chemistry to then engineering again but maybe engineering something to solve a, um, a medical problem or some other kind of science problem and the story just keeps going on the invention story for them just keeps leading from one thing to another they are they have been able to code um, some of their inventions so inventions where they've got things that are moving they've got sensors they've got motors then they've been able to use the abelix platform to code their inventions. For the younger children, they've been able to use a flow chart, which looks um, like the picture that's on the screen at the moment, where they just drag up blocks and it's similar to Scratch. Um, there is another version of this, which is Abelix uh, Scratch version as well. Um, and as the children get more proficient with this, and as they've started to use it more over time, they've then started to click on the C button which means that they can then convert their code and see the equivalent C programming language which is one of the really important coding languages of the world. Uh, so they're not only inventing now, they're learning basic coding, they're then learning high level C programming coding and now they are able, they've, they've been able to update their interfaces recently so that they're also able to convert their code into Python programming and over time they've stopped using the flowchart, some of the children who've been doing this for a long time because they've learned the C program C programming now, they've learned their pro Python and so now high level coding is coming into their inventions as well. Um, I was really lucky then to, uh, had, I did quite a lot of work to be able to hunt down the person that had innovated and invented the kits that our children were, were doing some great work with. Um, this guy, Dr. Yun, um, he is the person who's invented these kits. And I really wanted to speak to him because we had so many young people and so many teachers asking us, um, you know, this, this is wonderful. We're able to invent and do loads of things. We want to be able to invent and do even more stuff because with this is so versatile. We've got so many different components. Children can basically engineer whatever they want to do, but there's a few extra things that we want. So teachers started to ask for things like um, fire sensors and electromagnetic sensors so they could bring all sorts of other science into their invention process. I managed to speak to Dr. Yun and um, I managed to, to pass all of these messages on to him, um, along with some other educators as well. And, and he's, he's now developed, his team have developed 
an invention kit, which is, this is in the very early stages, um, but it uses all of the parts that we've been using so far. But then he's, he's listened to our requests for not only grayscale sensors, but also colour sensors, so that children can actually get their inventions to detect different colours um, and then do something when they detect a particular colour, which might be important in whatever they're trying to achieve with their invention. Um, we've now got infrared sensors, electromagnetic sensors, fire sensors, camera sensors, lights, um, a, a whole variety of motors, a whole variety of cog systems, uh, six side connector blocks and a huge variety of structural components and this is an example of the children just getting into one of those kits and just using all the different components that there are. This is in very early stages um, and we're kind of researching this here um, in the UK and testing out this new kit which hopefully will be available to others um, other other educators across the world um, hopefully this year or ne next year. Um, so everything that we develop, all of our programs that we develop, our curriculums that we develop and our teacher training programs, um, more information you can find out about those um, from our website www.discoverystem.org.uk or on our Facebook page Discovery STEM Education, our Twitter which is at discovery underscore stem underscore or you could feel free to email me melissa.butt at discoverystem.org.uk um, and we, we are happy to share our resources with you and um, share our practice with you and help in any other way that we can and we would love to add you onto our mailing list to keep you updated on when we do teach training online um, and also in our center as well thank you very much uh, for listening to me and um, i'll pass you over back over to lisa thank you Okay, thank you so much, uh, Melissa, for your insight. So hopefully we can learn uh, a lot from you uh, and also the educators here as well. So we have uh, some future teachers as well joining these educators uh, meetup so they can uh, take note and learn something from you as well. Okay, so for our dearest educators, please type out your questions in the chat box and we will discuss them during the question and answer session later. Okay. Next, uh, coming up, we have another inspiring uh, sharing from none other than Ting Yin from China. So let me share my screen first. Okay, so Ting Yin is the CEO of IDE Education, which is uh, based in China. So uh, to keep the time, so please welcome Ting Yin from China. The time is yours, Ting. Hello. Uh, so I don't have the permission to share my screen. Okay, we, we think we will give you the permission. No, yeah, now I can share that. Thank okay, you. Sure. Let me share first. And okay, so good afternoon, everyone, and good morning. I am Ting Yin from IDE Education China. Thanks very much for inviting me to this wonderful Me Talk. I am very happy to share with something we are really excited in in China. That is the invention uh, education event we are holding annually in China. That is the Invent Future Invention Convention, and we call it If I See. And Invention Convention as you may know, is intended to inspire young people to become innovators and inventors and entrepreneurs. So the heart of the Invention Convention is STEM, invention, and entrepreneurship learning, which prepares students to be critical thinkers and problem solvers for 21st century. Now, the Invent Future Invention Convention, if I see, is the first student invention convention event in China. So students from kindergarten at a very young age, usually at five years old, to high schools are presenting their innovative inventions at IFIC annually. It really inspires them to care about people and the world around them 
and discover and solve problems in their real life and create inventions with social impact and business value. So here, let's take a look at some students' inventions. And this invention is called the viewer. Yeah. It is uh, invented by two grade eight students. So it is a rain shield on the roof of this car. So you can see the yellow part of this car, right? The problem the invention solved is that on rainy days, the rainwater usually falls on the front window of the car. So the driver could not see the road in front of the car clearly. Usually will cause very uh, terrible accidents. So the inventors used the Lego EV3 and 3D printing and some other skills to install a freely retractable rain shield on the top of the car so that the rain could not fall on the front window. And in summer, it can also shield the sunshine. So this is the first invention. And let's to take a look at another one. This one is called Dishwasher, it is from a grade three student. The invention solves the problem that no one wants to wash dishes after dinner. Oh, this usually happens in my family too, because it is really a lot of work. So the inventor used a motor to trigger the brush in front of this invention and to wash the dishes. So people can just use one hand to hold it and wash dishes. And another invention here is called Kid Protector. It is from a grade five student. This watch that can send, it can send out the distress signals when a student who wearing this watch is encountering a bullying situation. So the watch will make a very loud SOS sound and have bright slashing and send out its distress signals to parents teachers and the police in Wi-Fi. So try to protect the kids as soon as possible. Okay, so you have seen three inventions. These inventions are from uh, uh, if I say event. If you are the judge at if I say event, then which invention will give the highest score? The number one viewer or number two dishwasher or number three kid protector? Which one will give you the highest score? You can leave your if you leave your uh, decision to the chat box. Yeah. And in an invention event, what are you looking for then in an invention or event uh, when you're judging? So um, it, what is the most important invention prototype? Or how students explain their invention? Or the technique used in this invention? Which one would you think is the most important? Okay, so in invention event, sorry. So, sorry that I, I uh, my computer jumped to a wrong slide. I will be sharing that again. So the most important is the inventing process. That is what we are looking for in an invention convention event. Now, a very famous person told me that a very famous person is also here today. The educational value of inventing is not the product, but the process. So inventing is a realistic practice for success in the real world, just as Melissa just shared that is the real world problems that really matters in the invention that students make. So it is this process that prepares students, students to be future problem solvers. Now let's have a quick look at what inventing process means. The first the staff students need to identify a real world problem and discover the value of solving this problem and then understanding it, do some research of existing solutions. So to discover the causes of the problem and determine if student solution is unique. Then ideating, students need to choose one solution from many brainstormed solutions. 
and then comes to designing, building, and testing. After that, students are going to investigate whether their solution really solved the problem. So they need to test their inventions to the people who had this problem, get feedback from them, and keep refining. Finally, students will show their mo most important factors of the invention and the inventing process to other people to sell their ideas to the world. And that is the whole inventing process. So that is why in if I say event, we have three category judging rubric. The first one is invention process and then invention impact and communication. And invention process contains the whole uh, process from the identifying to testing and the invention impact is more on the research or work students have done to understand the market and the value and originality of the invention. Finally, communication that will evaluate the prototype, displays, and the pitch. Now, let's get back to the dishwasher. So the dishwasher is as you just saw, it may not use too much techniques, but we can see a clear inventing process in this one. Uh, I'm sorry that it is in Chinese, but I can read that for you. Okay, so this is the display board of the dishwasher. So here, student find that in his family, no one wants to wash dishes after dinner, and his mom and dad usually argue about that. And then he research here you can see there are some uh, existing products. So the students started some uh, existing products, compare, it, compare them, and then after comparison, he decided to invent a washer here, not taking too much place and easily can be taken away and will not use too much electricity. So this is what he found out from the existing products and decided what he wanted to invent. And after that, he brainstormed the three possible solutions. And then finally, after comparison, and he, he finally decided to use the, this one to be the final solution. So after that, the student further asked some family, uh, some friends' families to see whether his invention would work for other people. And then people give uh, some feedback that the speed, washing speed is not quick enough. So the inventor decided to improve the efficiency in the future. And the inventor, sorry, and the inventor recorded all the inventing process clearly in the inventor logbook as other uh, inventions in if i say did so we can see clearly of his uh, problem solving process and there's another sample sorry uh, okay i'll show you another sample this is um, another sample is created by a grade two students even though the a prototype here it looks very simple and we can see how he got this uh, final invention he find out this uh, problem from his grandma in fact one day he find out that his grandma want to answer a phone and answer some message but his grandma is using a walking stick it's really hard to answer a phone while we're using the stick because our, our mobile phone is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So he find out that it is a problem. And then he invested, the, he invested this problem and did some survey and find out that many older people have this problem. He didn't, and he didn't find any existing product through e-shops. Just remember, he is a grade two student, so he can only go to some e-shops or going to the supermarket to see whether there are some existing products and after that his father with the help of his father he found out two possible uh two kinds of the working stick and four types of the phone holder he decided to combine the working stick and the phone holder together so and then 
he recorded the, the refining process. This is uh, version one, and he find out he need to still, uh, there's something wrong, and he made a version two, and then he made a version three. Every time he improved that a little bit, and then finally, he calculated the whole cost of this invention and decided to price it at 20 US dollars. So this is the whole inventing process of this inventor. It clearly shows the problem solving ability of this young student, even though he is two, grade two year, uh, is a grade two student. Okay, so these are what we are looking for at FIC event. The student has the ability to solve any problems in the future. Along this journey, they have the ability to gain new skills by either learning from existing products or from the feedback from other people or from the help from other people. What is more, they understand the value and the impact to the society of every decision they made. So this is why the heart of FIC is STEMI education, that is STEM and invention and entrepreneurship. As you may notice, the most of the problems students are solving are their own problems or the problems from the people around them, like their family members. We can usually see similar inventions but solving totally different uh, people's problems, just like this picture shown. There are two rulers and two cups. So it seems like the same, quite similar solution, but they are solving totally different uh, questions, uh, problems from different peoples. For example, the ruler with a block, the, this is the, this uh, white one, the ruler with some blocks inside, that ruler helps uh, the pupils, Chinese pupils, to write Chinese characters to, with the same size and can be at the same baseline. So that would look quite pretty because it is invented by uh, students at grade one. So that is his own problem because he wants to write some characters very pretty. You may know that Chinese characters usually look like a block. And the second one here, the, this ruler is attached to a cap, to a pen cap, because the students find out that it's usually not that convenient to take a pen and a ruler. What if to combine them together, then everything would be solved, everything would come to easy. So that students invented this uh, pen with a cap, with uh, this cap with a ruler, and that solves the, his own problem. And the cap, here, the cup here, this uh, white cup is invented for the inventor's little sister because his little sister usually after the uh, teeth brush, he find out that the cup is really looks very dirty. Did you have this problem too? You may find that after some time, the cup, uh, the cup to, to uh, you use the brushing your teeth, you really get very dirty at the bottom. So the little sister don't have the, doesn't have the ability to make it clean. That is uh, the problem comes from. So the brother want to invent this BB cup for her. And this green one is also from an inventor want to invent something for his parent, for her parent, uh, grand, grandparents. Because uh, his, her grandparents is uh, a little bit older and then could not use the hand to hold the cup steady so that the water usually spilled out. So the inventor invented this cup to help his, uh, her grandparents to hold, the, uh, to hold the cup well, the water will not spill anywhere. So it will be easy for them. Now we can see that the rulers the inventors solve the problem from themselves. And the cops, the inventors solve the problem from their family members, from their families. Do you know which uh, invention uh, is the best seller during our uh, IC event? Can you make a guess? 
which one sells uh, sells best? Yeah. So it's this one. This is a writing ruler. It's it is so popular that at the first day of our last year's uh, Invent Future Invention Convention, it was totally sold out at the first day. So many still uh, other inventors came to this event right, uh, writing ruler inventor to buy this ruler. So it was sold out. It is really a great entrepreneurship learning experience for this student so that to understand the value of the, of his invention since students are solving real world problems and create inventions with social impact and business value so the judges uh, in FIC are usually composed by educators and experts in different industry sectors like engineers and designers from some leading companies in China and some in investors from virtual capitals and some awards are also set by the industry leading companies. Winner students feel so proud that the value of their invention is recognized by real world top companies. Okay, so do you want to see more? If you, then you must come to IC event and to see more innovative cases. And we are, we are going to have the IFIC 2020 in next month. And we are very excited to welcome inventors from Indonesia and the United Kingdom to the event and celebrate that together with the Chinese inventors. Thank you. Thank you. And back to you, Lisa. Okay. Thank you so much, Dean, for that wonderful sharing. So. Once again, everyone, if you want to ask questions to Ding, so you can uh, drop your questions in the chat box and discuss <coughs> the questions uh, during the question and answer uh, session later on. Okay, now uh, last but not least, we have Mr. Jake Mendelson. So he's affiliated with the Global Innovation Field Trip which established in the USA. So please welcome Jake Mendelson from the USA. The time is yours, Jake. Uh, hello. Let's see if I can get this to work. Um, let's see if I can get it to work. Okay. I never trust technology. Um, Wait a minute. There we go. Do you see invention education in the real world? Yes. You, say, you see that? Yes. Great. Okay, good. I'm sorry. I'm just always confused by this stuff. Okay. Thank you very much. I, I, I hate being last because now I have to follow all those great presentations. Um, my name is Jake Mendelson, and what I want to do is talk to you about invention education maybe from a, a higher level than a specific types of inventions. Um, I'm involved with the Connecticut Invention Convention and we have been around for a long time. There are many states in the United States that are running invention programs. Oh, there we go. And uh, I just want to give you the numbers for Connecticut. This is our 37th year. We started a long time ago. Every year we have about 18,000 students participate and we have a state final with about uh, 1,200 students in it. Uh, Connecticut is actually a very small state. The entire population is just a little over 3 million, so it, it's not very large. One of the things we're very proud of is we have about a 50-50 male-female uh, participation. Some people think inventing and engineering is a, a male activity, but we have shown that the young girls and women are just as good, if not even better, at this. So one of the questions we saw we start off with is what is the purpose of school? And the purpose of school is to create a productive member of society. When your students get out of school, we want them to get a good job. We want them to have a to have a family and to have some things, a car, maybe a house and take a vacation, have a good life. That's the purpose of school to get them ready for that. So the question then is, what is a good job? 
And it turns out that today, all the good jobs are problem solving jobs. Lawyers solve problems, doctors solve problems, engineers solve problems, but electrician solves a problem. Somebody says to the electrician, I want an electrical outlet over here. And the electrician has to figure out how to run the wires from over here to over there, doing it safely, effectively, obeying the building codes. They are solving a problem. Those are good jobs today. But in the future, all the jobs will be problem solving jobs. When I was a child, there were good jobs in a factory picking something up, painting it green, and putting it over here. Picking it up, painting it green, putting it over there. Those jobs are all going to be gone. And the reason is robotics. We are entering a robot revolution, and all of the simple jobs that don't require problem solving will be taken over by robots. And so your students need to know how to be problem solvers. When I was a child, being educated was knowing facts. What is the capital of Brazil? If you knew that, they said, oh, you are very smart, you are educated. Now I pick up my cell phone and I say, what is the capital of Brazil? And I get the answer. What we need today are not people who know things, but can make connections. And that's what education is. Making connections, putting things together, solving a problem. So in order to have students solve problems in the future, we need to have them solve problems today. And that's what invention education is all about. Teaching students how to solve problems. Now, a typical math problem might be how much is two plus two? I, I'm an engineer. Nobody ever asked me that question as an engineer. Never asked me that question. But that's a very typical math question. That is a STEM question. But our real problem, our real question is, what can you do with that knowledge that is of benefit to society? Take that STEM information that you learned in your traditional STEM classes, in your science class, your biology class, your math class, and then apply them to a real world problem, a real world issue. And that's what invention education is all about. Why use inventing? And you've heard this before, the value of inventing is not the product, but the process. And I know we saw some really interesting products that students had made and they were great. And I, by the way, I, I love that ruler and I love the cup, okay? But that's really not the goal. When I was in school as a teacher and I would ask students how much is two plus two, it wasn't because I wanted the answer. I knew what the answer was. What I wanted was for them to figure out how to come up with the answer. I wanted them to understand the process. It's the same thing with invention education. The process that the brain goes through is more important than the product that the student has made. And so inventing is realistic practice for success in the real world. And that's what we're trying to do. The goal of using inventing is to learn how to think and to solve problems. And once you can do that, you can solve any problem, no matter what the technology or situations occur. I am an engineer, I've mentioned that. I've done a lot of work in robotics. I have started robot companies. I have done all kinds of things in robotics. I have designed products, electronic products that have been sold around the world. But by degree, I am a chemical engineer. My degree is in chemical engineering. And people have said to me, Jake, how can you design that circuit board? You're a chemical engineer. How are you able to design that electronic board? And I said, because as a chemical engineer, I learned how to think and solve problems using chemicals and pipes and, and, and uh, pumps. And now I'm using electrons and wires and batteries. It's the same process. All that has happened is we've changed the technology. When I tell students that there were no cell phones when I was a child, they do not believe me. They think there's always been cell phones. And there will be things in their future that do not exist today. We can't teach them what that equipment is and how to use that equipment in the future. 
we don't know what it is. What we have to do is teach them the process. And then no matter how the technology changes and what new problems occur, they will be able to succeed and do well. Here's something what I guarantee people in Connecticut. We will give students an unforgettable life-changing experience. The student may not remember anything else that they've done in fourth grade, but they're gonna remember their invention. They're gonna remember what they did in the Connecticut Invention Convention. I guarantee it. We've been doing this for 37 years. I now run into full-grown adults who when they find out that I'm connected with the CIC, they say, oh my goodness, I invented this wonderful thing. And they tell me all about their invention. They said, of course, nobody liked it but my mother, but, and nobody would buy it, but I still have it. It was something that changed their life. They're going to use their knowledge and creativity, the knowledge and creativity that they got in their normal STEM classes. They're going to use that to solve real world problems. And by the way, you've heard examples of this. It is their real world. As an adult, we may look at their issue and say, well, that's not really important. To them, it's important. The child whose parents were fighting over washing the dishes, he does not want his parents to be fighting. To that child, this is an important problem. They're going to have to solve it in a realistic way. Once again, you just can't make something up. It's got to actually work in the real world. And we'll talk about that in a second. They're going to use that experience to pursue careers. It could be engineering careers. It could be other careers because all careers, all jobs in the future will be problem solving jobs. And they're going to do that to make a difference. They will change the world. So what is an invention? In Connecticut, we define an invention as it could be something brand new. The first person to create a pencil, they made an invention. It could be an improvement. Somebody took an eraser and took a pencil and said, wait a minute, I use these two things together, sticks them together, create something new. That's an invention. It could be a completely different way of doing it. The person who invented the pen does the same thing. You can use it for writing, but it uses a completely different technology. That is an invention. In Connecticut, our focus is problem solving skills. So drawing a picture, writing a story, designing a game, they're very creative, clever things to do, but they do not solve a problem. So we do not consider them to be inventions as part of the Connecticut Invention Convention. When do schools do this in Connecticut? Well, some schools do it as an after-school activity. After the school day is done, the students stay, they have an invention club or invention group, and they'll be working on the programs. Some do it during the day as an option. Students in the United States sometimes have a, the chance to do things on their own, optional enrichment. Sometimes it's scheduled as part of the school day. And sometimes it's embedded in the curriculum. So the math teacher, the biology teacher, the chemistry teacher, the science teacher are all working together with the students on their inventions and their projects. Some schools in, the, in Connecticut do it at one, one grade, fourth grade. They don't do it before, they don't do it after. Some schools do it in multiple grades, maybe fourth and sixth grade. Some schools do it sequential, third, fourth, and fifth grade. And some schools, every single student, every single year, every grade does the invention convention. Clearly that is the best. Because when they start off when they're very young in kindergarten and they work and work and work, by the time they're in eighth grade, they are incredibly good. I keep talking about science and technology because I love science and technology, but I love the invention convention even more because it is more than that. It is language arts. It's graphic arts. You have to understand the society and the culture. You're making something that's going to solve a problem you have to know what's going on in the culture. It is public speaking. You have to present what you're doing and it is collaborating and working with people. This is what we all have to do as adults in our jobs. We have to do all of these things. Maybe not everyone every day, but we always have to be, have all these skills. And so that is what the Invention Invention is giving to the students, a full rounded experience in real world activities. 
what do the students end up with? At the end of the process, they end up with a working invention. Now, it's age appropriate working. Obviously, an invention made by a first grader is probably not going to be as good as an invention made by a ninth grader. We expect that. Okay? So it's, it's working. They physically have to put something together. We want that experience of doing that. They have an invention log. Okay? An invention log is a diary. As they're doing it, they're writing down what they did, what worked, what didn't work. It is not a book report. It is not something that is turned in and completed after you're done. It's a diary and you're working on it as you're doing it. They have to make a display board showing what they have done with their own personality, what they think is important. Once again, this is what we all have to do. When you come up with an idea, you have to tell people about it. And then we have a judging circle which is really just an interview, a discussion with other people about your invention. So here are some examples of working inventions, all different kinds of things. Once again, it's great if students can reuse stuff that they've had. Um, recycling materials is wonderful. We always say it's better to make something than to buy something. All kinds of different inventions. We have an invention logbook. Some schools want to have the students have a very beautiful, organized logbook. That's wonderful. Other schools say, nope, just write it down. Write it. It's okay. And if you make a mistake, cross it off. You're not being judged on beauty and neatness. You're being judged on what's going on inside your head. And I love this. And this student you'll see right here, uh, obviously, this is a very good point. And they put a whole bunch of stars and wrote important. They had made an accomplishment. They had accomplished something. We have the display board, lots of different styles. Once again, we want the students to use their own personality. Some display boards obviously are better than others, and that's okay. Some students have more graphic talent than others. But it's a wonderful learning process because the students get to see what other students have done and how they've done it. And even if my display board wasn't perfect, when I saw Susie's and hers was better, I go, ha, ah, I'm going to use a different font next time. I'm going to do it better. And then we have judging circles, which is a terrible name. Judging circles are not circles, and they're not judging. It's really the students in a group getting together with some adults, and the student gets a chance to explain and demonstrate what they have done. And the other people get a chance to ask questions and talk to them about it. The inventor gets to be the center of the stage and gets a, a real wonderful experience of, wow, there are people interested in what I have done and how I have done it. We have a state finals, and here we are getting set up for the Connecticut Invention Convention State Finals. It takes place at the University of Connecticut, which is our state university. We take over many different areas within the university. And here they are in the gym setting up some of their inventions. We have display tables, and the students are setting them up, and they're in the beginning, there are parents there watching and everything. We chase the parents away, though, when we do the actual judging circles. And here we have a judging circle, and the students get a chance to explain what they have made and how does it work and why might it be a good idea. And then, of course, we have an award ceremony, and here people are lined up, and you've got some people in suits giving speeches. But more importantly, we get a chance to honor and celebrate what the students have done. We do not actually have winners. We have recognized inventors. We believe that every student who has gone through this process has gained and has learned. Now, some students may have done a slightly better job, and so we want to recognize that they have done a good job, and we give away awards, which is called a recognized inventor. We also have sponsors and companies who have supported us with money and sometimes the personnel to help us do things and so they give out sponsor awards and they tend to give out sponsors award, sponsor awards in a theme that is important to them so we have a a food distribution company which gives out an award based on, for an invention involved in good health uh, we have the u.s postal service which gives an award based on delivering the mail and then we have a lot of happy and proud inventors uh, getting their picture taken and they get a certificate of congratulations. We also give a plaque to the school that they came from, congratulating the school. 
They are a school of distinction. And then every year we give them another sticker that they can put on and say how good their school is doing. The mind is not a box to be filled. It's a fire to be ignited. I, I really believe that. That is the purpose of school, to ignite the students. And I want to show you two students, and I'm not showing you these to tell you how wonderful I am as a teacher. That's not the purpose. I want you to sh see about minds that have been ignited. This is a, a young woman, and I was her teacher for science, and she thought I was teaching her science. And she now left school and she now has a PhD in astrophysics. She works for NASA up studying the stars and uh, she has a PhD. And she wrote this in her PhD thesis, a little note to me. It says, for inspiring me to succeed beyond what I could imagine. She thought I was teaching her science. And what I was really trying to teach her was what she could do with that science. And she has gone way beyond anything I taught her. And that's what I have tried to do is to start a fire. This is a, another young woman. She is, I think, in about fifth grade. And they were working on an invention project. And they were using a material called Parallax. It's a, a, a microprocessor. And at the end, her teacher said to me, this was a student, she wasn't one of the best students in the class, but she really came alive because of this project. And I want to share this very short video with you. I hope you could hear and understand that she said, I know I can do things because I did it. And that is the goal. She has now been set on fire. So the future and the students who will make that future are waiting for you. And when I talk about the future, I'm talking about the future of your students, but also the future of your country. And even more importantly, frankly, the future of the entire world. Your students will go out and do great and wonderful things. They may not cure cancer, but they will be problem solvers. So what can you do? We have created the Global Innovation Field Trip, and it is a platform for students around the world to present what they have done. It is a platform for you as a teacher to talk about what you are doing in your schools. It's absolutely free. If you go to globalinnovationfieldtrip.org, you can sign up. We have another event coming up in October. Um, you may think, oh, it's only September. I have plenty of time. It is filling up fast. So please go to the site, log in, tell your students. They can talk about something they have done. It doesn't have to be a great invention. It's an innovation. Anything that they have done, we want to hear about it. We want to make them special. We want to make them a hero around the world. Thank you very much. Thank you for your patience. Okay. okay. So thank you so much, uh, Jake, for the impressive sharing. So all of our three speakers already shared it. Ah, good. I managed to turn it off. I'm back. Ah. <laughs> So that is um, Kira ID, K R Y A dot ID. Their uh, organization in Indonesia. They are doing incredible work with um, innovation, invention, all kinds of education, and uh, with educators and teachers and students around the world. They they really do an excellent job. Um, and that was one of their uh, me talks. Now, you saw at the very end, we talked about the incredible um, gift program event that's going to take place. Um, oh, uh, right now. I'm sorry, but it's too late for you to sign up. However, however, there's going to be another one coming up January 16 and 17. And we're going to start promoting that. If you're on our email list, you'll be getting emails about it. And if you're not on our email list, then get on the email list. Go to globalinnovationfieldtrip.org and 
sign up, get on the list, and you will be kept up to date with all the latest information. And a big bravo to the most organized schedule coordinator in the whole wide world, who will be sure <laughs> <laughs> to accommodate you <clears throat> when we fill up uh, at the earliest possible time. Uh, so don't hesitate. Uh, we definitely, definitely have space for everybody all yeah. around the world. Thank you.